Hi, my name's Irrelevant, and I'm here to talk to you about burgers. Maybe you're one of those people who thinks you have to go out to get a good burger. Maybe to Five Guys or the Townhouse if you're local. Or maybe you think a burger at home is just a hassle because you need to bust out the grill and you have to make a big slab of meat and it gets all weird and you got to dig your hands in with the, 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 the wood chips and onions and all that nine yards and... No, this is simply not true. Burgers, in fact, can be very, very simple and very, very easy. And it's quite f likely that you might not go out to the old fast food joint much anymore once you know this little secret. So, yeah, if you're like me, uh, you, you maybe didn't go, you, you maybe didn't make burgers at home. You thought you had to get all the onion soup mix and the breadcrumbs and the eggs and you had to stick your hands in there and in there and in there and in there and... You know what? That's bull. You see, that recipe as we know it was invented by a Campbell's Corporation back in the 1950s to not only sell soup but teach, uh, you know, the housewives feeding their family how to make uh, use of low-grade beef that they could afford, but things just aren't like that anymore. We have the luxury of wandering into the grocer and getting some nice extra lean ground sirloin for maybe a price we can afford. In fact, if you go and buy a couple Big Macs, chances are you're going to pay just as much or more than you would to make these burgers at home. Now, one of the first aspects of making a good burger is your portions, right? There is a math to making a burger. Now everybody carries smartphones on them, so don't give me no guff about crunching a few numbers. You see, burgers are usually in pounds or quarters of a pound, uh, fractions of a pound or ounces, right? However, meat in our grocers is sold in grams. That's uh, quite the conflict, if you will. But see, you see, one pound equals 454 grams. It's as simple as that. So if we take 454, divide that by, that's wrong simple. 16 ounces in a pound, right? What do we got? Let's go. Let's first go. Computation wise. 44 divided by 16 equals 28.375. Or you can just go to 20 point, right? 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 So, so you're going to notice the picture. Meat's only different sizes. 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, 44, of busting out the calculator and crunching a few conumbers, there's a very much easier way. Again, one pound of beef equals 454 grams. So you find yourself a pack of beef that's as close to that as possible, right? And then it's simple. There's your pound of beef, half thirds. Each third is two patties, right? It's as simple as that. That's what I do. I grab a pound of beef and I take roughly a third off of it. Maybe, maybe a little bit more if I'm feeling a little scrumptious, uh, but I don't quite want a quarter pound. Not, not for me. I like to have two smaller burgers instead of one bigger burger. That's ultimately my preference. So I, I, I go for the, you know, you know, you could just do it like that. So, <laughs> screw all the math, right? So seeing here, I have about 200 grams of beef, a little bit more than I told you, but sometimes that's how it goes. Now, I'm just gonna, you know, normally I would have the pound in front of me and I would just grab a glob out of it, you know? As simple as that. You just grab a glob out of it. Now that looks about right. Now, one of the tricks is you don't wanna overwork the beef. People, when they're doing those recipes with the, the onion and, and the bull, you know, <laughs> don't get me started, you end up overworking the beef and making it really dense. You want to work that beef as little as possible. Now, one of the tricks is you want to make it relatively thin and way wider than you think you're going to need it. Some people have this trick with a donut hole in the middle, but uh, I don't find that necessary. Hey, just go ahead, slop that on the pan, right? 
just like that. Now I have it medium heat, maybe medium low heat. And part of the trick is in how you cook it, right? This is extra lean ground beef. According to specifications, I could rip a half a pound of this and not blow my daily fat intake. And indeed, they're not fatty burgers. Now once I have them on the pan, which is actually a cold pan, I'm going to set my timer for seven minutes. The first side is getting cooked at seven minutes on a cold pan over medium-ish heat. Air in the side of caution. Maybe go a little under medium if you're not sure. You don't want to cook them too fast or they won't cook fully through. And you don't want to cook them too slow or else they'll dry up. I agree, it's a pain in the ass washing the meat off your hands after. Now you can't make a good burger without good ingredients. And that's one of the secrets that some of these places you might consider as serving good burgers, it's one of their secrets, is the bun. They're not using Wonder Buns. They're not even using those big thick D'Italiano ones you get when you're barbecuing the big beefs. They're using some sort of posh fancy bun in a package that you're gonna have difficulty opening. These are not quite brioche buns, but those are recommended at Food Basics. They have brioche buns. They are a Ace Bakery Classic. Ace Bakery Classic. They're a little bit more money than plain buns, but um, it's economical if you're on your own. If I buy a big pack of buns, there's a very good likeliness that they might get wasted. And again, we're trying to make a good burger here. Something equivalent to a boutique-ish-ish. -ish. Now we're gonna go ahead and cut these in half for one of the second most secrets. All right? Now, me. You're probably gonna use tin foil unless you just happen to have the right implements that line up the way mine do. See, basically, I got a pie plate and a pot lid, right? Then I'm gonna put these in my toaster oven that has settings for temperature. And it's going in there at about 375 for 10 minutes. 350 to 375 should do you well. Now, this is 10 minutes from a cold oven. If you have to use a full-size oven, it's gonna be a little bit different. Maybe try preheating it and then uh, putting them in for five. And again, you're not toasting the buns. Very important, you remember that. What you're doing is you're reheating them, right? If you don't have this kind of tomfoolery that I got going on, what you're gonna do is wrap them in tin foil, closed, Closed is good enough, maybe open if you want it to not take so long. And you're gonna put it in the oven, maybe, I say about five minutes, but either way, wrap them up. Keep that moisture trapped in there. Stop them from actually getting toasted and crunchy. They come out like nice, warm, fresh break bread. Now, my preference, because these are such damn good tasting burgers, I'm a, uh, I'm just gonna have a side salad. I'm not even bother with certain toppings. I keep it simple. I got some bread and butter type pickles here. Those are the sweet ones, not the dill. You can go for dill. And of course, you're probably gonna want some cheese, but guess what? This is where it doesn't get so fancy, right? One of the ways I figured out this recipe is I was at Five Guys, you know, everybody's fussing over Five Guys and I'm eating their burger and I'm trying to figure out what is it, it is a good burger, what is it they're doing differently? And I found it was just simple, plain beef on a flat top grill, relative quality beef, a really nice bun texture. I couldn't find anything special with the cheese, it just seemed like plain American cheese to me. So I still use singles for this. If you use too fancy of a cheese, it kind of takes over the flavors. 
you need a more subtle cheese to accentuate it and not, you know, steal the show. Eventually, those seven minutes, they're going to be up. And then it's going to be time to flip those pepperinos. Now you can go ahead and do the classic little press down. You see how these guys are going, eh? Oh, nice. Yes, I know those little runoff tailings are gross. One of my favorite burger beefs that's currently not quite available is PC Loblaws had this extra lean sirloin. Came in the wrapper pack. That was my favorite. Now they don't have that. Not lately. So I've been resorting to normal ground beef. It's a little bit more greasy. Just a little bit more greasy. Remember, once you've flipped, the next side is five minutes. That's the problem with burgers is it's a, <laughs> it's beef on a bun. And again, every vegetable you eat, another year you're less likely to have to wear diapers in your old age. So, I have this along with it. Eventually, you're gonna find that your buns are ready. Careful, they're gonna be hot. Hot buns are a good thing. The ladies like hot buns, so I've been told. Apparently, that's my greatest asset. I gotta put a slice of cheese on one of them. That's how I split the difference. I don't put cheese and mayo on the same burger. I'll put cheese on one and mayo on another. And other than my cornbread, hamburger is about the only thing I use mayo for. And that's a bit much, actually. This is going to be a juicy ass burger. Ah, speak of the devil. And there they are. Now, you might want to just split one open. Make sure it's not pink inside. And you're going to notice. These aren't huge patties. They are about the size and consistency of maybe a fast food patty. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is seasoning. I keep forgetting that salt and pepper existed, but a little bit of salt and pepper on the meat before you put it on the grill, or, you know, after you write put it on, put it on the raw side, flip it over, put a little bit more on, it, it adds, it, it definitely adds. I don't personally feel the need to salt stuff. I'll throw on some last minute pepper here for good measure. Now we're gonna dress these up. There's no real magic to that, it's just to taste. I know I want ketchup on both of them. And I know the one, the mayo, is getting mustard. I'm gonna try, for good measure, some heartbeat hot sauce. <laughs> Pineapple habanero on this one. Yes, I've been watching hot ones. And finally, on my cheese one, which also has a habanero, some of my pickles. The bread and butter pickles are sold around in the large containers, but you cannot get the slices in the large containers. That is um, somewhat disappointing. And, you know, some for me. Because pickles, I think you know it. Now seriously, how hard was that? Less than 20 minutes according to a, a timer I see on one of these miniature screens surrounding me. Oh hell, right here, 22 minutes. And it's even less than that if you're not dinking around. So, how stupid easy was that? Just do it, bud. Just do it. Get some beef and put it on the pan. It's that simple. We don't have to overcomplicate things. There are advantages to some of the more complicated recipes, but for the most part, some of the best ones are the simple ones. So, enjoy and bon appetit. But it's easy to understand. You see, one pound 
equals 454 grams. It's as simple as that. So if we take 454, divide that by, oh, well, that's the wrong symbol, 16 ounces in a pound, right? What do we get? Let's, uh, let's refer to the little computational device. 44 divided by 16 equals 28.375. Or, you know, you could just go to 28 point freaking whatever, <laughs> right? 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 So, a typical burger patty is about three ounces, unless you're going quarter pound or something beefy. If you just want one big burger, that's quarter pound, four ounces. Otherwise, three ounces is a typical patty. So, you're gonna notice at the grocer, the meat, it's sold in different sizes. It's not always perfectly 454. It could be 506, it could be 389. So what you need to do is you go, well, that's 28 times three equals 85.125 grams per patty. Or a pet pat, if you will. Therefore, you know, how many patties do you want to make? In my case, I'm making two patties. Multiply that by two, and we get a grand total of 170 grams of beef, right? If you were uh, making for two people, that would be 340 grams, which you maybe could find something that big. You might find a 360, and then, you know, just quarter that, 